I think pets are way more trouble than they're worth, dude. That's my opinion. And welcome to the Rowdy.com Big Three, where we talk about NASCAR. He's Buck Beaver. I'm Bass Masters. We got to meet. We got a crunchy change to talk about. Woo! And wonder of wonders, it's at Roush Fenway Racing. We oh, would have oh, thought it. That almost never happens. Never. <laughs> yeah. Except and the Matt Kenza three times already. And it's cool because now we get to talk about Blickensderfer, Derfer, Derfer, Derfer. Derfer. I've missed saying the name Blickensderfer. Well, you so get far. to say it again because for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Donnie Wingo, Donnie Wingo. is out as David Reagan's crew chief. Drew Blickensderfer. Uh, late of the 17 team, yeah. is moving back up from Nationwide to take over the number six. I guess, unlike the rest of us, Jack Roush still believes in David Reagan. Well, he's got to believe in David Reagan for the next nine races. So he's going to see what he can do with David Reagan for the next nine races. And my feeling about Reagan is something I've come to about some other drivers, which is if everything's kind of set up for him, that they can perform. And we've seen, we've seen David Reagan perform and show a lot of potential, but the problem is when the team gets a little off or or things are not quite hunky-dory, it seems like some guys lose their way pretty quickly, and it feels like David Reagan's one of those guys who's lost his way a little bit. The progress has stopped. Can he get it back with Drew Bilkenstorfer? For his sake and for the team's sake, I hope so. I would not put my hard-earned cash on that, well, but I, I think that's what we're trying to find out. Drew Bilkenstorfer, we met him and interviewed him and thought a I lot of him. I still like him as We thought a lot of him. We were impressed by him, and I, I really think maybe, why not? Put Blickensturfer in there for nine races. See what you got. The see Blick is move. back, baby. The Blick is back, and I, I really, really hope they can pull it off. But I ain't counting on it. After Richmond, the 33 guy, a team got warned about being very close to tolerances. After New Hampshire, the 11 and the 48 failed tech inspection the first time through after the race, had to let the shocks cool in order to get through post-race tech inspection. These guys are playing it awfully well, close to these tolerances. I, I, would like to do, I would like to issue uh, right now a warning to Buck Beaver. You're real close to the line too, mister. Oh, and who gave you the right to say that kind of stuff? <laughs> Me. I just said it. I just know, said it. Hey, look, here's the you're Buck, so full of crap. Buck, do you want us to bring out the templates? No, we'll bring out the you, templates. You bring out the templates. We'll bring out because the templates. Because I am not oh, over. I said you're close to the line, and that's what NASCAR has said to, mm. as I said to the 40, uh, to the, I think it was the 48 and the 5 last year, look, 33 car, you are really close here. I don't know if you're off on your build sheets or whatever, but you're really close. You expect these teams to push it. They should push it. Uh, they yeah, need to be surprised. careful that they don't go over the line. And, it, and I think the thing that NASCAR can do is, I think it's fine if they warn them before, they're, before they cross the line and be very clear about the, here's the consequence if you go over the line. NASCAR is the parent and the teams are the kids and you gotta expect the kids are gonna push it. Push it to the limit. So you need to be able to draw that line One very more clearly. Time. I, listen, here's what I, what, I, what I hope. NASCAR is straight up, and I think they are, I know they are. Listen, you say to these guys, you're at 98 when 100 is the limit. And if you go, go to 101, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if you're Jimmy Johnson. It doesn't matter if you're Jeff Gordon. It doesn't matter if you're a superstar, Carl Edwards. We are going to slam the hammer down. As long as they are consistent, perfect, go, awesome. But if they, if they start to fudge a little <laughs> bit, I, 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 you know, you, you can't cut anybody a break. And I'm not surprised these guys, what are you saying? Could I just repeat something? Perfect. Perfect. Go. Go. Awesome. Next issue. <laughs> Next issue. Bass, you and I spoke around this issue a little bit. I want to have it more directly. Does a driver, does a team need to change their approach because it's now the chase for the championship? Let's start by listening to what Jeff Burton says about this. I think you be who you are. I think it. I think it's a mistake to try to become something you're not. And that's not to say you don't even try to improve what you are, but I don't think you change personalities. You become something that you're not. I think you have to be true to who you are, while always trying to be better at who you are. So we're trying to be very aggressive in building faster race cars, but I just don't think you can become something you're not. Okay. Well, I I kind of get it from a driver's perspective. The answer is yes. If you're out there on the racetrack. Uh, and you're driving your race car, you can't rethink every move you're going to make, you know, based on the situation and the fact that it's in the chase. You kind of have to go with your instincts and your style and race guys the way they race you and not uh, hold yourself back too much. On the other hand, if you're a crew chief and you're, or you're setting up the car, or you're making calls during the race, you have got to consider the situation. You have to take into account the fact that it's the chase. You have to take into account NASCAR's point system, which currently 
it gives you much more downside for finishing poorly than it does upside for finishing well. So I think you need to be careful about doing things like running your guy out of gas or putting him in a position to run out of fuel. Work sure it worked out for Clint Boyer, but it didn't for Tony Stewart, and that's a major blow. So I think from a crew chief point of view, from a team management point of view, you don't take your, when you got a two-stroke lead at the British Open, you don't haul out your driver and try right. to hit it over the water because that's how you lose the British Open. Okay. Joel van de van de Veel. I'm sorry, but the way they award this championship is based on points. So if you're smart, you're going to pay at least some attention to points. Jimmy Johnson is abject proof. When he gets to Homestead and he has a lead, he's not out there trying to lead laps. He's just trying to keep it cool. Keep it cool and not get into trouble. He changed his approach a little bit based on the situation. Right. You're a fool if you don't at least consider the situation. Having said that, I do agree you can outsmart yourself if you think too much, especially in the heat of the moment behind the wheel. But Tony Stewart... A win is not as important as finishing maybe second and third a couple times in a row. Depending that's, on the situation. Yeah. But you can't outthink yourself still. All right, that's been your Rider.com Big 3 for today. Wade Bass, can you outthink yourself? You huh? can outthink yourself, and I'm d thinking it's time to wrap this thing Go. up. Go! We'll be back. Power. Awesome. Awesome. You got it. You, what was that again? You, it awesome. Was perfect go. Per perfect. Awesome go. That's my new motto. Perfect, awesome, go. All right. Well, we hope that you embrace uh, why it. Why don't you just make your motto random words strung together? <laughs> Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.